Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. In this video, we're going to go over the basics of arrows and how to bend them around objects. Go ahead, hit X and delete the default cube, shift A and add in a plane. I'm going to hit seven to come to the top view, tab into edit mode and drag a box over these two vertices. Then I'll hit E to extrude, right click to drop them in place, S and Y and just pull out until about there. From here, I'll hit E, X and drag in this direction, then S and Y and zero to snap into the arrowhead. Now, if I wanted to change this arrowhead at some point by moving it further back or say closer to the actual body, you'll notice that right now I can do that quite freely. But if I were to click anywhere else and then try this again in solid view, there are actually still two vertices here. So I would only be grabbing one. You do want the two vertices. It has an impact on shading and some modifiers later on. But if you need to grab both, just remember, do so in wireframe mode. This way you will always grab the two of them. Great. Now, from here, we're going to give our arrow a little bit of length. So grab the other end, hit G, X, and drag it out. And we now basically have our arrow. If you only needed a very simple flat arrow, you'd essentially be done. Let's assume that you want your arrow to be a bit more interesting. So tab back into edit mode, hit Control R to add a few loop cuts into this body. Just about there should be fine. And now we're going to come to the modifier properties and add a solidify modifier. So this is going to give us a little bit of arrow thickness, just like that. We're now going to add a bevel, change the segments to two, limit method to angle, and add a subdivision surface. And all of this is for when we eventually wrap this around a curve, we want it to look a little bit cleaner. And this is going to add extra geometry for that. Now right click, shade smooth, and you'll see this little line appeared. We're going to solve that by coming to the object data properties, coming to normals and checking auto smooth. Great. Once you've done all of that, there's one last thing to do, which is to add the curve that we're actually going to bend it on. So Blender by default actually only comes with a few options for curves, but if you come to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then check this box for add curve extra objects, you can add in all kinds of other curves to bend around, which is convenient because it includes some of the most desirable, such as if we hit shift A, curve, I'm going to use arc. Now I'm going to open this little menu here, change my end angle to 180 degrees, and I'll bring the sides up to about 12. From there, I will tab back into object mode, scale my arc up, and now I'm going to grab my arrow, which I will rename arrow, and I'm going to add the last modifier, namely a curve modifier. The object is of course going to be the arc that we just used, and you see that right now the deformation axis is X. If I change between some of these, they will make more or less sense. X is going to work for all of the setup that we've done so far. If you want now, note that this is deforming an X. So if I want this to move along this path, I simply have to grab the object the way that I normally would, hit G to move it, lock that in the X axis. And now when I move along X, you'll notice left to right, I'm moving along X, it will follow the curve when it intersects with that curve. I can also rotate it along the X axis to get this kind of effect. And again, I can now move along X and you can see my curve is moving just like that. There is only one really important thing to mention here, which is that when you are warping along a curve, it is actually deforming the object. And so the obvious case for this is not going to be this arc, but we're going to use a simple spiral. So we'll go ahead, hide this arc, and we're going to add two different spirals that are actually almost exactly the same. So we'll come to curve spirals, arc median, and now we're going to change the steps to 12 on one of them. We're going to bring it to three turns and we'll change the height to just about three. From there, I'll, uh, you know what, I actually think one is better. Then we'll just scale that out by three times, and this will be our first arc. The second one is going to have the exact same settings, so shift A, curve, spirals, arc median, and again, three, we want 1.5 for the height. But instead of 12 steps this time, what we want is, let's say, 60 steps. And then we're going to hit S and three again, just to scale that up. That's not quite right. And we'll scale that until that matches. Good. And now we'll look at the difference between using one of these curves and the other. So we'll call the first spiral curve angular, and we'll call the second spiral curve smooth. And the only difference between the two is the number of steps that I had. Anytime you're using any sort of curve with a curve modifier, the more steps you have, the smoother that stepping will be. So coming back to my arrow, I'm going to first use the angular curve. And you can see when I bring this up, just hitting G and X here, you can see all of these angles. You'll also notice that the spirals have this tendency to warp the object 
inward. And that is just going to depend on the radius of the spiral versus the size of your object. It's a more or less prominent effect. You just kind of have to deal with it. You can try and rotate out on X to sort of level it out so it's normal, but it's a little bit tricky to get that right. In any case, you can see this is very angular, but if we were to change to the smooth curve that has far more divisions, you can see now that is much, much smoother. Again, we can try and rotate that so it's normal, but it'll be normal in one area and sort of deformed in the other. That's just the nature of the curve. I have yet to find a solution to that. If there is one, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. In any case, thanks for coming out. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, hopefully use it to make some figures, and until next time, you have yourself a great old day.